Hello guys, welcome to the next episode of this Mercedes Sprinter van conversion. In today's video I'm going to show you how I built the shower within our van. This video has been the longest in production. It starts right at the beginning of our van build when the van was pretty much empty. We were deciding where the shower tray was going to go and how we could get the waste through the floor. And then it progresses through the build as we're doing the furniture and the side walls of the shower right through to the end when the van's pretty much complete and we're just doing the PVC lining of the shower. I've been taking video clips for this particular episode all the way through the build and now's a good time to put them all together to show you guys what I did. So I hope you enjoy it. Time to get the shower cubicle mapped out inside the van. I mean you can plan as much as you like on the computer but you really need to set these things out in real life because there's other things to take into consideration like I know, directly underneath the van here, in front of the wheel arches, there's a main structural member here that holds the wishbone suspension. So I've got to make sure that this waste outlet doesn't obviously go directly into that main structural part of the chassis. You could hand it the other way, but then I know also that where this join is in the van, there's another main structural member here. So we've really got to decide exactly where to put it. What I can do is this tray is oversized. So I can cut a little bit off the back to push it further this way. I can also cut a couple of inches off of this flange here to push it two inches closer to the wheel arch. And that's what I'm going to have to do. Also to take into consideration is the heating ductwork. Because what I wanted to do is get a bit of this heater duct bring this up through the back of the toilet here and bring it up into the garage so I need to make sure that when I cut this flange back I've still got room to get that ductwork through behind and underneath the tray into where the bench seat is Just working out how much I can cut off this rear flange. This is obviously the ply lining of the wall. We need to get this duct through here. We have got a couple of cables to pull through there, but I've got plenty of space top and bottom. So the maximum I can go to is really the thickness of this duct. So I'm just gonna use this board just to mark this edge and then we'll trim this edge of the flange off as well. So before we commit ourselves to cutting a large hole in this tray and a large hole through the floor in a van, I'm just going to drop a small pilot hole right in the middle and then a pilot hole right the way through the floor of the van. We can check if we've got enough clearance to drill the larger hole and then we can go ahead and do that after we've made sure that that's okay. If we cut the big hole straight away and it's in the wrong place, we can't go back. So that's the hole for the shower waste through the belly of the van. You can see the ground out there now. We've missed all those main chassis members. Good bit of planning there. This is the only one that's in a fixed position. So this is the only one I was really majorly concerned about. The other holes for the sink waste and the dropout vents near the heater and near the gas bottle, we've got a bit of scope to move those around this shower tray has got a hollow underneath it so when you stand on it it's going to flex so we need to give some support to that so the best thing to do i've cut a piece of 12 mil ply which is the same depth as that depression and then i'm just going to stick that in there with some sycophlex and then i'll bond that to the floor brought an extra long 
great for the shower. This is 90 mil long because this will go all the way through the floor of the van and then I can connect the waste pipe trap on the underside of the vehicle. I'm just going to make it into this tray with some of this sicker sanitary silicon. This is specially developed for sanitary appliances, bath, showers and sinks, anti-mould resistant, antibacterial, really good sealant. Put a little bead around the edge of the grate just to seal it to the tray and then we'll do the same on the underside. from underneath do we'll just leave this overnight so the silicon's gone off completely before we install the tray and most plumbing fittings they only need to be finger tight I mean once that silicon's gone off that's not going to leak anyway right so we're pretty sure that we've got everything in here now and this is the final time we're going to put this shower tray down obviously the holes all prepared and then coming through there we've got the ventilation duct the gas is secured to the wall with the clips as stated and that's actually running one continuous bit of pipe there's no joints in that from start to finish so I'm not concerned about that leaking at all and then we've got hot and cold water services running through there and about five cables tucked under there as well so it's quite a bit coming through the back of that shower void there this is probably one of the busiest areas in the van in terms of services. Some bits of timber to make sure that the edges of this tray are well supported these are also what's going to be helping to fix the partition walls so these are going to get screwed to the floor and then I've got something fairly substantial to screw the walls into I've got that bit of timber that we screwed to the bottom of this partition wall which is supporting this edge of the tray. This bit of timber will support this edge of the tray. I'm just going to secure those two together. And then what we'll do now is we'll drive some long Craig screws into the floor. So this bit of wood is going to support this side of the shower tray. Again we've got the pocket screws which I'm going to screw into the floor. And then you'll notice this has got a slight incline on it. It's higher at the back here than it is at the front. And that's to make sure that this piece of shower tray has got a little bit of a slope to it. So if any water falls on this little ledge here it's going to run back and into the tray. Place a little bit of sicker flex on the top, same as before. Once this has gone off, this will really help to secure the tray. I did originally put a pencil mark on the floor there when I had this all set up and square. So all I've got to do is make sure that I'm on my mark there.
At the top of the shower here, I need something for this front wall to fix to, because there's nothing here that I can secure into. Also, this wall that comes along here, there's nothing really to fix to here either. So I'm actually going to build a timber frame, the same size as the ceiling, out of the 2x1 batten, glue and screw it all together, and then I'm going to fix that into these structural steels, here and here. That will make that really secure, and then we can fix in from the ply into that batten, fix in from this front edge. I may even Craig screw it from the back so they can't be seen. And we've also got a timber batten here that we can fix into this partition. And that will just tie all the head of the shower walls together. the frame all screwed together with Craig screws and glue. We'll leave that to go off and then we can fix that into the ceiling of the van. To assist us with marking out this other side of the shower and getting this curve marked out correctly I've just picked out the straightest bit of wood I can find out of my wood pile and I'm going to just screw this in the corner of the shower here. I'm going to fix it to the bottom to that piece of timber down there with a little drywall screw and the same at the top and then we can use this as a stick to measure off to get the various distances back to the wall when we're creating our template. Now we've touched on scribing before, you can see there's a very tiny little gap up here and I want to bring this in really nice and tight. So rather than using the scribe tool, all I've done here is I've just got my pencil and I've laid it flat on the ceiling and then I've just run it along the ceiling, leaving a pencil line and I'm literally only probably talking about two or three millimetres difference between the edge of the pencil and the centre of the lead. Run it along the ceiling, leave a mark on your board. Now if we cut to that pencil line, that's going to scribe into that curve perfectly. So you can see we spent a little bit of time finessing that template but now the join between those two panels is really nice and tight. It pays dividends to spend a little bit of time and get your templates really accurate because it will make a world of difference with the finished product. And this join, out of all the joins in the van, is the biggest one and probably the most prominent because it's right in the living quarters. It's always going to be the one that you'll be looking at. I've got my template clamped up to this top rail. This is obviously our temporary measuring stick, although it's acting as a straight edge between the corner of the shower tray and the corner of this top wooden brace. This bit of wood is 18mm thick. The partition that we're putting in here is 15mm thick, so that will give us a little 3mm overhang. So I can simply just run my pencil down this edge of this board and that's going to indicate where we want to cut the furniture board to. And then by the time we've got the PVC push on trim onto that, that will give me a tiny little sort of two mil gap between the two boards, which should look quite nice. The teeth on your circular saw cut in an upwards direction. 
So when you're using anything like this on sheet material, you want to make sure that the good side of your sheet is facing down. And if you're going to get any tear out, it's going to be on the back, which is less noticeable. The reason the teeth cut upwards towards the saw is what it does is it has a tendency to pull the base down onto your workpiece. So it stops it jumping around and makes it a bit safer to make the cut. I've raised the blade so there's only enough showing just to cut the board. There's no need to have a massive amount of blade sticking out the bottom of the saw. I'm just going to run this edge, trim off this unclean edge and give us a nice straight edge to start with. Just putting some tape down underneath our template so we can mark round it with a pencil and then cut it out with a jigsaw. This is the first trial fit of this board. That top edge is looking really good. It needs to go back into the wall by about half an inch. I left it just a couple of millimetres long. So at the moment it won't go back upright because it's really tight on this front edge. The back seems to be okay but this front edge is a little bit long so we just need to shave a little bit off towards the front and then this will stand up nice and tight. It's always better with anything like this if you're slightly unsure leave it a little bit longer than you actually need it. You can always cut more off but you can't stick it back on. So all we've got to do on that front corner we've just got to feather off to about 3mm. Now I know the distance from the edge of my saw blade to the edge of the fence is 35 so I'm going to measure 35 mil here, so I don't take anything off of this bit. And I'm going to measure 38 at the other end. Put my fence on that line, and then it won't cut here, but it will cut 3 mil off that end there. This is the side panel for the shower. I've got it back in the workshop here. And what we're going to do is put some trim on it. Now on this front edge, which is going to be exposed, I'm going to run this T-slot plastic trim, which we're going to cut a slot in the front edge and then push this in. This is a lot more sort of hard wearing and it will take a little bit of a knock. And then on the back edge where I'll put these two bits of tape, that's where the window is. Now it's finished pretty good on the window, but if you was to put your hand behind there, you could maybe just feel that raw wooden edge. You can't actually see it unless you press your face up against the glass, but I'm going to just trim that edge with a bit of this iron on trim. I know it's uh, something that probably you won't see, but it will just finish off that edge quite nicely. First thing we're going to do is set up the old trim router with the special little slot cutting bit, and then we'll run the slot all the way along this edge. And then all we do to set this up, I take a scrap piece of this same furniture board and then I just make sure that that slot cutting bit is lined up exactly in the middle. Oh look at that, that's pretty good straight off the bat, blimey. Lock that down and then we can run that slot.
can use a mallet but as I've just seen it's easily marked this stuff so if you're going to do that maybe use a cloth it pushes in quite easy there's no need to really give it a lot of force We've got to cut the PVC sheet in for the shower. Now this is only two and a half millimetres thick. I can't really use any power tools on it because I'm concerned that it might chip or break or shatter. So the options are I could use a handsaw on it and then just tidy up the edge with some sandpaper or I could try these metal shears. Now these are for you cutting galvanised steel, tin. So I'm going to try these, see how clean the cut is with these and then we'll go from there. That's made quite a good cut, those metal shears. All it just needs just to finish it off is a little bit of sandpaper on the edge just to bring it nice and smooth. This blue is only the protective covering. We'll remove this at the last moment just to reveal the finished sheet. Okay, so we've cut the first of the PVC sheets to fit the back of the shower. This is a fairly straight cut. I've just had to scribe in that bottom edge only by about five mil, just to get that really nice and tight down the bottom there. All I need to do now obviously is run a bead of mastic along there when we come to finish. I've also made sure that these edge joins along the side here are also really nice and tight. I've obviously got to put another sheet of PVC on this yeah. side wall and that'll run into that and then we'll finish off with a neat bead of mastic down the corner. But I'm spending a bit of extra time on these joins and these edges just to make sure these seams are really nice and snug because the least possibility that the water can get through here the better. This is the stuff that we're using to secure the PVC in the shower. It's an adhesive and a sealant, bonds and seals, most substrates, even in damp or wet conditions. It's got a really strong grip and it cures quite rapidly. So this should give a really excellent hold for our PVC. It also is suitable for temperatures down to minus 40 and plus 100 degrees C. So it's got an excellent temperature range. This is where you could do with a J-roller really. Really put some pressure on it. Still, it's a good workout. This is another way you can create a template. I've used some wallpaper, sort of lining paper. Put a couple of sheets taped to the wall. This is a straight edge up this side and then I've left the excess at the bottom and up the sides and then I've just pushed it into this crease to form a fold and then I've just run my pencil down that crease 
and then that will trace a perfect template. We can remove this paper, put it on our PVC sheet, cut around it, and that should give us a perfect match to that curve. I transferred the paper template to the PVC sheet, stuck it down with some tape, and now we're going to cut round it. Just finish sanding any of the little rough edges that are left by the shears and then we'll give it a test fit. So there we go, I think we'll leave that video there. We've just got to put the wall with the door in and do the final connections to the shower. This is one part of the build that I was really worried about because whenever you're dealing with water and especially in a van, which is a moving vehicle, it's always going to be difficult to make sure that you get all of them joins sealed and make sure you don't get water everywhere. But I'm really pleased how that PVC lining's gone together. You know, those joints are super tight with a little bit of mastic on there. I'm sure that'll be perfect. Once again, thanks very much for all your comments on the previous videos. If you've got any questions, do leave them down below and I'll try and come back to you as soon as I can. Thanks very much for watching. Appreciate your support. Cheers.